people in this place. Surely there is move of God. Yes, there is move of God. Yes, there is move of God in this place this morning. And we cannot just watch. Yes, he is touching live. He is hearing people. Thank you, Father God, for the ministry, Almighty God, that is taking place in this place now. Thank you for the hearing, Almighty God, that in this place this morning, Almighty God. Father God, as we lend to the earth, Almighty God, we are declaring, Almighty God, that by thy stripes, Lord, we are healed. We are healed. We are healed in the name of Jesus. Come on, let us receive this hearings. Even as we continue to lift up his holy name on high. Because in the name of Jesus, he is hearing in this place. He is hearing in the, this place. And I am calling upon you, right where you are, that this is the best moment that we can come to the altar. This is the best time that we can come to the altar and pour our hands. We pour our hearts to him. If you are there, I am calling you now. Come, let's pour our hearts to him. Let's pour our hearts to him. Like where you are. Because this is the light moment. It is the light, awesome time that we can spend in his presence. If you are there, come, let's worship the Lord together. Just take, it, take advantage of this opportunity. I want you to cross that veil of flesh, that veil of fear. Just come to the altar. Pour out your heart to him. If you, if you, if you have sickness in your body, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want, we want to pray for you for, that for healing right now. Just come. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Lift your hearts to Jesus. Sing it. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my soul. Come on, take one step closer to Jesus. Come on, just I, I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Come on, church. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Come on, church. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, we thank you today for your mighty power and those that have come to your altar, Lord, we just pray right now that the virtue of Christ, that same virtue that was in the hem of your garment, it would flow right now. Everyone here, church, just stretch out your hands toward these. Hallelujah. Pray, 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 pray. How many sense the presence of the Holy Ghost here? Say amen if you sense it. Make this declaration with me. Make this declaration. Say, we strengthen the weak. We heal those that are sick. We bind up the broken. We bring back what was driven away. We seek the lost. We gather. We will not scatter. One of those phrases contains your mission for this week. One of, one of those phrases. Father, right now, just lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for every person that's here today. Lord, no one's here by accident. Lord, we thank you today that we can come before you open-faced and behold you face-to-face. -face. Lord, let that transfer, let that blessing, let the life of God be poured out upon your church right now in the name of Jesus. Everyone say, Lord. I receive your healing. Lord, I receive your comfort. Lord, I receive your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You mean that? Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a great praise. 
Sharon, great to see you. Dwayne, good to see you. Amen, amen, amen. I was thinking about how many know that there's some crazy stuff happening in the world. Any of you? I, I, don't, I don't watch the news anymore. I miss David Brinkley. I remember David. He was, he was good. Uh, I miss Walter Cronkite. Remember him? Yeah, yeah. That's a whole other matter. I just, aren't you glad this morning that, that the Lord doesn't have a face mask on? Because you want his breath on you. You want his life to be breathed upon you today. So I just want to encourage you. So many people, they're, 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 they're too afraid to encounter God's love. Because of what might happen. Do you understand that the devil only works with things that do not exist? Most of the mistakes that you've made in your life, it's because of something that you thought might happen if you did that. So you did the opposite. How many have ever done that? You see, do not base your future on something that hasn't happened yet. No, base your future on what God has already provided for you. That's faith. And if you learn to live in that, in that realm, i got to tell you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And you will rise above. And the, the, it will frustrate the devil. But there's no way that you cannot succeed as long as you don't quit. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not a quitter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Rachel, so good to see you this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you're, you're here. You must be the, the mighty army. Are you you're ready to take Tacoma for Jesus? <laughs> uh, no one else is going to do it. You, you guys might as well be the ones. Amen, amen, amen. Dwayne, would you come up here and pray over our, our, our giving? Uh, most of you have uh, been here for a long time. Some of you are guests this morning, and we honor you. We thank you for being with us this morning. And if you just take a moment and fill out uh, my next step card, just so we can have information, ways to communicate with you. Um, and just uh, for the sake of uh, 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 safety, uh, just prepare your offerings and your, your tithes uh, during our service, and then we will receive those at the end of our service and during our prayer time. You can bring them to the front and place them in one of these offering receptacles. Amen? And so that's what we do here. But I want us to pray over our giving in advance, and I want us to make a declaration together because, uh, you know, God spoke, and then the worlds were formed. You understand that? And if you were created in his image, if you were born again, anyone here born again? Just checking. Then nothing will be created in, your, in front of you until you speak. You must speak. And you will get exactly what you say. So if you speak by fear, it's not a good thing to do. Don't do that. If you speak by unbelief, if you, if you speak out of the flesh, that's, there's a better way to live. Say better way. You can speak the words of God, and you can speak of those things that are not as though they were. So I want you to consider today, what, shall I, what can I bring to the King of Kings? What can I bring to my Lord that reflects my heart of worship to him? And as you, as you pray and consider that during our time together, let's make this declaration together. Amen. Everyone, stand to your feet because we're going to quote the word of God here. And I want you to aim, take aim with your giving this morning. Say this with me, everyone. Father God, you said in your word, he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. But he who trusts in the Lord will be prospered. And whoever walks wisely will be delivered. Lord God, today as we give, we put our trust in you. We give and it will be given to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into our bosom. Hallelujah. The same measure that we use will be measured back to us. We will not be controlled by debt. Because we give to the poor, we will not lack. Because we seek the Lord, we shall not lack any good thing. You have given this place into our hands. 
a place where there is no lack of anything that is on the earth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Dwayne. Pray over the church. Pray over our giving. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be honored to. Father God, just thank you so much, Lord, for this day. This is a day that you have made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. We give you thanks, Father, from our hearts for all that you do for us, Lord. Everything that you have done and what you will continue to do, Lord. You're so awesome, so wonderful, so gracious, full of love, grace, and truth. Lord, we give to you because you have given to us first. We give to you, Lord, because we love you. You say, Lord, that you love a cheerful giver. Lord, we just pray, Lord. Our spirits are right before you, Lord, that we just, from our hearts, we want to give back to you. Lord, thank you so much for all your blessings. Thank you, Father, that we have freedom here to worship you in spirit and truth. Thank you, Lord, for so many, so many blessings, so many times, time and time again, you keep proving yourself over and over, who you are, what you're able to do, Lord. Thank you, Father. Help us to just uh, show our love to you and to give to you freely from our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That was awesome. That was awesome. Go ahead. Be seated in his presence. Just relax. Take a big, big breath. Take a big breath. And receive the peace of God. Bert, receive the peace of God. Thomas, receive the peace that passes or surpasses all understanding. Amen. I feel like just one or two of you have testimonies or something amazing that God has done or is doing right now for you. Who are those people? A couple of you are supposed to share something. Who are you? Come on up, Dave. Uh Uh-oh. This is not planned. This is not scripted. This this might be. A... Everyone say hi, Dave. Hey. I got a brother-in-law that will never go to church. Or at least that's what he's always proposed. So this morning when I left, I happen to be living with him right now. Yeah, uh, he asked me to uh, pray for him. Awesome. Who's coming to you? That's awesome. That's awesome. How many know that people are watching you? I feel like we're, uh, I like the old TV shows because that's the only ones that have any substance. How many know what I'm talking about? I'm showing my age. How many remember Gomer Pyle? Remember that show? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Can we talk about that at you? Oh, golly. <laughs> and just think, I, I just feel like the church, we're gathering together and we're relaxed and we're, we're loving one another. We're getting to know one another. It's just good, better to be together. Amen. Uh, but the Lord has a, a, something he wants to do today, and he's going to call us to attention. And he's asking us to form rank. And all of a sudden, we may just be a, a, a loose gathering. And all of a sudden, he's going to make a regiment. He's looking for something, for someone to be at attention and to hear the word of the Lord. And I believe that's you guys this morning. So, uh, so clean off your rifle, get your, get your uniform spiffed up. And what was, what was the sergeant's name? I forget the guy's name. What was his name? Sergeant Carter, he's not coming today. He went to Life Center, but, but, uh, oh, come. Hey, hey, years ago, my wife and I went to a missions conference at Life Center, and it messed us up, and it, re- it set my life for where I'm here today, so I love that place. It's a great place, so anyway. 
Hallelujah. Open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. Lord, we thank you that your word is true. Lord, we thank you that when, <clears throat> when we take our blinders off, when we focus on your word, all of a sudden we can see things that have always been there, but for one reason, we, we just didn't see it. So, Lord, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Let it be shed abroad in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. So everyone say amen. amen. <clears throat> now pretend you're in Africa with me. Anytime you feel like it, you need to say hallelujah as loud as you can. All right, practice. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Here in 2 Corinthians 3, <clears throat> I want you to look at verse 15. We'll start reading here. <clears throat> but even to this day, when Moses is read, say when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. You know, there's a lot of churches, they just stay in Moses. Uh-oh. What Moses spoke, was it the word of the Lord? Absolutely. But when all you do is read Moses, there's a what? A veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, what does it say? When one what? Turns, say turns. Turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. There's a lot of people that say, you know, I love Jesus, but this Holy Ghost, I'm not too sure about that. We, you know, we, we believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We just don't want to operate in them right now because someone might get offended. Have you ever heard that? But this verse tells you now that the Lord, and that is Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, that Lord is the Holy Ghost. You can't love Jesus and not, not be sure about the Holy Ghost because the two are one. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Say Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is here this morning. Come on, can you tell me? The Spirit of the Lord is here this morning. Thank, uh, thank the Lord. Lift your hands and just thank Him for His presence here today. You see, when you turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Every time you turn, every time you turn, the veil is taken away. God wants you to live in His power. Amen. God wants you to be surrounded by grace. Amen. The will of the Lord is for you to have no limitation in your life. Hallelujah. Come on, get this today. The spirit of the Lord declared in the book of Exodus, I am the God that healeth thee. Hallelujah. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Come on, someone shout hallelujah. You see, there's a presence here that the gods of this world will never understand. Let me give you two examples about liberty. Okay, amen? Is that okay? Remember the three Hebrew young men who became part of Nebuchadnezzar's uh, government in Babylon. Remember? That was uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember the story? When the decree was given to bow down to the statue and worship, remember their response to Nebuchadnezzar. In verse uh, 18 of Daniel 3, write that reference down. They said to the king, let it be known to you, O king, we don't serve your gods. And we will not pay homage to the golden statue that you've erected. Amen. Amen. How can you bow down and serve something that you don't serve? A lot of believers are bowing down to the wrong thing this morning. Come on, church. You know the story. They were thrown into the fire, weren't they? But there was someone greater in the fire with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And these three young men, they never lost their liberty. Oh, and they were vindicated. Glory to God. 20 years later, when, when Daniel was one of three men 
They were the chief magistrates over all of the Persian Empire. Darius was king, and there were three men that did all the work for him. And the Persian Empire stretched from India to Libya. It was not a small country. And Daniel was one of three that led the empire. The other two were filled with envy and jealousy. And they concocted a plan to remove him from office. Kind of like an impeachment hoax. (laughs) The same spirit. They made a decree and convinced King Darius to sign it into law. Now, what was the decree? You can't bow down to anything or anyone except King Darius and his statue. Now, here in Daniel 6, look at Daniel 6 and verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, say upper room, uh uh-oh, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. You see, this wasn't something that Daniel did just at that moment because he was in trouble. No, he always did this. He always knelt down. He always prayed. He was always giving thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. He never set his liberty aside. Amen. And he was also vindicated, was he not? This morning, I want to talk with you about the power of thanksgiving. Write that down on your notes. The power of thanksgiving. No one can take thanksgiving away from you. It's not just a meal that we eat once a year. It's not just one day we remember. No, thanksgiving is the release of your heart. Back to the one we serve. Back to the one who died for you. Back to the one who removes the veil. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And no one can take it from you. Hallelujah. See, in Christ, in Christ Jesus, you're always safe. Don't look at me like deer in headlights. In Christ, you're always protected. Get this. So I want to give you three simple things. You already know them, but I want you to know them today. Number one, thanksgiving releases God's power. How many need the power of God in your life? Here here we go. Here we go. Just give God some thanksgiving today. Look in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. This is one of my banner verses. Now to him who is able. Is God able? Get it settled in your mind. Is God able? Yes or no? Now to him who is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think. According to the power. Say power. Power. According to the power that works in us. There's no limit to God's power. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. His power is beyond our reasoning. That's why sometimes we we argue with him because it doesn't sound reasonable to us. God, don't you understand, God, what might happen if I do that? And off we go, amen? But his power is beyond anything you could possibly imagine. Imagine how good God is, and he's gooder than that. But catch what he's saying here. The safety and the protection that his power provides. It must be working in you. You see it? Say, in me. And so here's the question, church. How do we get this power inside of us? Well, just go back up one verse. Look look up at verse 19. It says, to know 
the love of Christ, which passes, that word passes, it means surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Do you see that? Circle that word know in your Bibles if you have your Bibles open. It means to personally experience. This is just not an idea. No, you encountered his love. So the power of God comes inside of you when you experience and receive the love of Jesus. See, God wants you to be filled up with all of his fullness, not just a little bit. Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants you. Yeah. God wants you to be filled up all of the time. All of the time. See, that's, that verb fill is in the continual present tense. Don't put it off in your future. No, no, no. This morning, right now, do you understand how powerful? Do you understand how complete? Do you understand how wonderful, how absolutely marvelous Jesus is? This love of God, this victory over sin and death that he has given to you. Have you received his victory? Uh -uh, I have received his victory. Ha ha ha, devil, you have lost. Ha ha ha, are you singing like that? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. This, now catch this. This fullness of God, say fullness. This fullness of God comes after you know the love of Christ. Not before. And notice Paul didn't say the love of God. Isn't that interesting? He said the love of Christ. It's the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. It's greater than science. It's greater than knowledge. The love of Christ surpasses all of that realm. He is the creator, amen. He is the one who formed the laws of physics, amen, amen. And so this word Christ, God wants you to encounter Christ personally. And if you will do that, thanksgiving will come out of you. You can't stop it in Jesus' name. Now circle that word Christ. Most of you know this, but some of for you Bible college students, that word Christ has two implied meanings. It's not, uh, it, the, the, the English scholars just transliterated the word. That's the Greek word, Christos. And it means the anointed one. Say the anointed one. The anointed one. Or it could also mean his anointing. Whatever is on this guy to make him anointed, the anointed one, right? And so the word Christ is referring to his anointing. Now, many religions are in the world say they love God. Many people say they love God. Amen. But to experience the love of the living Christ, that's different. That's really different. And Paul knows what he's talking about, doesn't he? He was the Pharisee of all Pharisees. No one studied more than he. No one knew the scriptures better than he. In the law, he was blameless. Say blameless. But he was still blind. His understanding was incorrect. Sometimes the more degrees you get, the less understanding you have. You still love me? Is this okay? But the Lord had a plan for Paul, didn't he? And he met him on the road to Damascus. And there, he experienced the love of Christ. And his life was changed forever. And for Paul, the veil was removed. Hallelujah. Now, this was not a happy time for him. 
It was a terrible day for him. Everything he thought was right was stripped away. Jesus came to dwell in his heart. And in that moment, he had a choice to make that day. Every time the love of God confronts you, you have a choice to make. Saul had to die. He had to reject everything, all of his experience, all of his education, all that he thought was right. And he had to receive by faith. Say by faith. faith. He had to receive the risen Lord and Savior into the place that he had made in his heart. So he set aside everything that he counted dear. And because he did that, he was filled with God's fullness. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? To be filled with the fullness of God, you first must encounter the love of Christ and then set everything else aside. Do you think the world wants to do that? No. But you're doing it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now go back two more verses. Just backward. Sometimes when you study the word backwards, you'll, you'll see some things that you normally don't see. If you go back these two verses, you will discover God's purpose for your life. Here it is, church. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. How? Through faith. Say through faith. Through faith. Are you believing Right now. Yes. In this moment. Yes. In these days, church, there is no other protection. You have to be believing God. Get rooted yes. and grounded in love. Amen. Yes. Because that's the source of your thanksgiving. <laughs> Storms will come. Mm. But once you're rooted, you'll remain standing. Amen, church? Now look at this word comprehend. Circle that word comprehend. It doesn't mean understand. It doesn't mean that. It means to pull down or to tackle all you football guys, to conquer, to hold down under one's own power. That's what this word means. So when the Spirit of the Lord comes, When the Spirit of the Lord begins to to dwell in you, you have the ability. You can seize. You can experience this love of Christ and never let go of Him. Oh, hallelujah. Can you lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord, my God. And when you do that, then His fullness comes into your life. And then His power begins working. Not out in the atmosphere but in you. Hallelujah. And then you will have his protection. According to the power that works in you. Can you hear that? Do you see that? God's power does amazing things. You might as well just relax today. God's got your life as you yield to him. So, what can God do in you? Dwayne, what can God do in you? Bert, what can God do in you? David, what can God do back in Michigan? In you. You really don't have any idea because whatever you're thinking, God's got something greater in mind. So when you give thanksgiving back to Jesus, he just shows up. Church, you will never lose your liberty in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17, Paul puts it this way. And, and whatever you do, just say whatever. whatever. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do all, say all, all, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father 
through him. Just do it. Do all. Say do all. all. Hallelujah. How do we do that? The little thing as well as the big thing. Many of you get uh, discouraged or you allow the accuser to beat you up because you have not yet done the big thing. Oh, if I only could be like Billy Graham. I've not won millions to the Lord. Oh, God, I'm such a worm. (laughs) Don't allow the devil to beat you up. How about the little things? Are you doing little things in the name of Jesus? Like picking your socks up off the floor because you love your wife. I heard a laugh over here. Who that? Doesn't matter. Little things? Say little things. Big things. Do all of it in the name of the Well, God doesn't really need to be with me when I pick up my socks. Oh, yes, he does. We're talking about staying in the fullness of God. We're talking about being in that miraculous place where no weapon formed against you will prosper. We're talking about comprehending the love of God and never letting go. You know, it's not that you need the love of God, but you're going to encounter someone this week that needs the love of God. And if you're not overflowing in his presence, you'll miss your opportunity. How do we, pre- how do we prepare for those God moments? I call them Kairos moments. The way we prepare is to do all, the little and the big. Do everything in the name of the Lord. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. There it is. See it? Giving thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no limit to God's ability. Stay in the place where you're giving thanks to God. And when the power of God comes on you because you're giving thanks, the favor of God also comes upon you. So thanksgiving releases God's power, but thanksgiving also releases God's favor. I need the favor of God. How about you? Lift your hands if you need God's favor. Oh, Look at this verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. It says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. That word by would be better translated in. The grace of God is given to you in Christ Jesus. Why? So that you don't come short in no gift. Why? Because God is faithful. Hallelujah. God doesn't give gifts to one and not to another. No, he is faithful and you will not fall short. Whatever you need this week, you have it waiting for you in advance in Jesus name. So you might as well lift your hearts and give God thanksgiving. Come on church. That was a pitiful thanksgiving. Let's try that again. Just help me. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord some thanksgiving this week. There we go. That's better. See, no one, no one can take your thanksgiving from you. This word grace, circle it in your Bibles there. It means favor. Doesn't it just irritate you when your boss has a favorite employee? <laughs> well, that person, they always get whatever they want because they have favor. It's not fair. Well, why don't you have favor? God's giving you favor this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm God's favorite. Ooh, yeah, yes. Because God is faithful. Say faithful. Because he's faithful, you're not going to come short in any gift. And that in itself is reason enough to give thanks back to God. In, In the midst of any problem, in the midst of any circumstance, the grace of God, the favor of God is still there to sustain you through that mess. Aren't you glad today? Do you believe that today? You must know this deep in your spirit. I want the favor of God, but I also know I need the favor of God. Hallelujah. And when the favor of God is on you, you'll just stand. When everyone else is falling, you will stand. Most of you know this story, but I want you to read it along. I'm going to read it out of the Good New, uh, God's Word uh, translation in the book of Acts chapter 16. Turn over there, Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas, they were doing everything right. 
right? They were loving people. They were preaching the word. They were walking in God's love and power. And they, they just had a wonderful time, didn't they? It says the crowd joined in the attack. Wait a minute. That can't be right. Did they have Antifa back then? The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. Then the officials tore the clothes off Paul and Silas and ordered the guards to beat them with sticks. I would say rods is a better word. These weren't little nerf, nerf sticks. They were, they were beaten. Say beaten. Now look at verse 23. It says, and, and after they had hit Paul and Silas many times, they threw them in jail and ordered the jailer to keep them under tight security. So the jailer followed these orders and put Paul and Silas into solitary confinement with their feet in leg irons. I thought we were going to have liberty. I thought Thanksgiving brought God's power. Well, we're not done here, are we? Look at verse 25. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We don't know what it was. All I know is it was really good. Say it was really good. Because it says all the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, oh, oh, suddenly, what is it? A violent, say violent, earthquake shook the foundations of the jail. And all the doors immediately flew open and all the prisoners' chains came loose. Maybe the obstacle you're facing today, it's bigger than you. Maybe there's someone else that's going to be set free because of the liberty that's in your life today. Hallelujah. Come on, fight the good fight of faith. Get this in your spirit here today. Hallelujah. The violent earthquake. See, in the whole thing, Paul and Silas remained rooted and grounded, even in the Philippian jail. They continued singing praises to God. Oh, hallelujah. Their thanksgiving could not be stopped. Church, just stay in the place of thanksgiving and you will experience the miraculous. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So thanksgiving releases God's power. Thanksgiving releases God's favor and thanksgiving releases God's miracles. Do you need a miracle today? Just begin to give God thanks. Come on. Your thanksgiving is what protects you. It builds you up. It establishes your steps. It keeps you. And the good thing is that your praise will affect the people around you. Everyone you meet today, they're full of fear and apprehension. They don't know what to do. Might as well give him praise. Jesus declared, he gave us a mystery here in, in John chapter 3 and verse 36. He made this declaration. I want you to understand what he was saying. Jesus said, he who believes in the Son has an everlasting life. Remember, we've been talking about how God builds the church coming to him uh, as a living stone, amen? And the word coming, you, you keep coming, you keep coming, you keep coming. This word believes, circle it, say believes. It's in the continual present tense, which means you're believing right now. And you're continuing to believe and you're not going to ever stop believing. Hallelujah. And you're believing in, say in. In the Son. The word in, it would be better translated into. 
See, your faith should be drawing you deeper into Jesus. With every breath you take, you should get closer and closer and closer to Jesus. So the world thinks believing in the Son means, well, I believe in Jesus. No, that's not what he was saying. He was saying continually being drawn closer and closer and closer to my heart. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So Jesus said, he who believes in the Son has as an everlasting life. That word has means present tense. It means right now. You don't get this after you die. If you don't have it now, you won't get it later. What was Jesus saying? Hallelujah. Only the person who is believing right now has life. Receive the life of God right now. Now, now, now. Hallelujah. Receive. Only the person believing right now would ever offer thanksgiving back to God. <laughs> Only the person believing right in this moment will have any protection in the world. Thanksgiving releases God's power. Thanksgiving releases God's favor. Thanksgiving releases God's miracles. Church, do not allow fear. Do not allow anything or anyone to separate you from the love of Christ. He is the miracle you need in this moment in Pierce County, hallelujah, on November 20th, 2020. Has anything caught him off guard? Has anything caught him off guard? No. Hebrews 13 and verse 15, Paul says, Therefore by him, or through Jesus, through his anointing, let us, what? Continually offer. There it is again, the same thought. Let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. This is not just for Sunday morning. This is to be continually coming out of your mouth. So if you're in the fiery furnace, if you're in the Philippian jail, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Let the continual giving of thanks be offered to the Lord. Because when you live in thanksgiving, you're living in power. Thanksgiving is your sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice. Remember that one? It's the fruit of your lips. Jesus declared to Peter upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it I have given you the keys of the kingdom hallelujah come on lift your hands church we, we've been given kingdom keys We've been given kingdom keys. You can't open the door, but the key will open the door. Hallelujah. We've been given keys to bind up some things and then to loose some other things. And where do we do that? On the earth. Say on the earth. How do we do it? Through prayer. Through thanksgiving. Well, that doesn't make any sense. How would that work? Hallelujah. It's the power of God. Hallelujah. He can be in two places at once. Did you know that? Hmm. Our mandate from heaven hasn't changed. The earth is our responsibility, not his. Use the keys. Use the keys. What is our mandate? Hasn't changed. Make disciples of all the nations. Hallelujah. That's your mandate. Winning souls changes the world. God will remove the veil from other people. How? Through you. Through your love. Through your thanksgiving 
And as they turn to the Lord, just as you have done, the veil will be removed. Can I meddle just a little bit? Is that okay? Like that? Sure. Who said that? (laughs) To be a Christian without being a soul winner is impossible. If you're not winning souls, you're out of alignment. Something's out of whack. Sometimes there has to be a rude awakening before there can be a great awakening. But the church in America, the nation, we're on the edge of a great awakening. Can you see it? Be a soul winner. Be a soul winner. We change the culture by winning people to Jesus. Only Jesus sobers up drunks. Only Jesus cures drug addicts, builds families, supports children, feeds the hungry. Only Jesus changes criminal behavior and reforms prostitutes and empties the jails. Only Jesus stops corruption. Only Jesus eliminates child abuse. Only Jesus deters divorce and he renews romance. Hallelujah. Only Jesus fosters love and only Jesus fills heaven. That is our assignment today, church. Christ is the answer for America. So when genuine love, say genuine love. I don't want this fake plastic stuff. No, when genuine love is coming out of your heart, the power of God will flow out of you into all those people around you. The gospel is the power of God. And his power is released through your thanksgiving. Come on, lift your hands. Let's give God some thanks right now. Hey, 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 here's our mandate, church. You know this, Ephesians 6, 11. Turn there. This is for you. How many love Jesus? Are you born again this morning? Okay, this, I'm sorry, I didn't write this, but you, read it with me. Put on, say it with me. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Say, put on. on. This morning, church, most, most people in America agree with the wiles of the devil. You see it? Things are just too crazy, so I'm just going to agree. Why do they do that? Because they're blind. Until your eyes are opened to see the truth, until the veil is removed, you're going to continue to accept the wiles of the devil. Church, it's time to stand. Stand up. Stand against these things. And give God the sacrifice of praise. Oh, hallelujah. May every eye be opened. May every heart be opened today. See that? Whether you like it or not, you have to go to the wrestling match. Your name is is on the list, and you're going in the ring. We wrestle against rulers of darkness. We wrestle against spiritual forces of wickedness.
Well, this word wrestle, it's an interesting word. It comes out of the Greek uh, wrestling matches. And in those days, it wasn't like Hulk Hogan. No, the, re- the wrestling match was a wrestling match to death. You would wrestle and kill your opponent. That's what it meant. So when Paul was saying these words to the church, they understood the image. You better be standing against these things. You know why? Because if the church is not standing, no one else is going to. This is the church's finest hour. Uh, Psalm thirty-four, fifteen: The eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are what? On the righteous. His ears are open to their cry. Church, where's the outrage? Where's the cry? The wickedness that's being done behind closed doors in the middle of the night all over our nation. Where is the outrage? The media is silent. The media is complicit. They choose to suppress the truth. The streets are quiet now. The mobs think they have succeeded. Where is the outrage? They seek to cancel Thanksgiving. Where is the cry? Because only the church stands in the gap. That's you, church. Only the church is praying. Colossians 4, verse 2, speaking to you this morning, continual, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Can you see that? So the power of thanksgiving coming out of you, stands against the rulers of darkness. We bring the sacrifice of praying. Mm -mm -mm. The power of prayer stands against the wickedness in heavenly places. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wake up, church. This is your finest moment. In one generation, say one generation, we have as a nation chosen to remove God from our government, right? from our schools, from the marketplace, from the public space. We created separation of church and state. That was our idea. How greatly we have fallen as a nation. And only the church stands in the gap. Why did all those things happen? Because the church was sleeping. Come on church, time to wake up. Is this okay? Hallelujah. Only the church stands in the gap. Only the church is praying. Only the church will call a day of thanksgiving and prayer in this culture. No one else is going to do it. Our government won't do it. The schools won't touch it. The media makes a mockery of it. But this is your finest hour. Give God the thanksgiving he deserves today. Stand up. In the love of God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wrestle against rulers of darkness. Sounds like a great vacation to me. You might get cast into a fiery furnace. You might get thrown into the jail. You might get beaten with sticks. But right there, in the midst of every impossibility, the power of God will be seen through your thanksgiving. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift your hands. May every veil be opened and removed from your eyes today. The word says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, With our eyes 
open-faced, we shall behold the King. Come on, we give God some thanksgiving this morning. Come on. Come on, come on, church. <clears throat> hey! Come on, church. Hey, hey! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us with might. Strengthen us with power. I just want to decree and declare. We're going to proclaim this Thursday, November 26th, as a day of thanksgiving and prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, the church, declare it as such. Now, this Wednesday, come on, say Wednesday. We're going to have a special Thanksgiving prayer service right here. And I'm going to give each of you that come a proclamation for you to declare in your homes the very next day. And it's going to contain Thanksgiving proclamations that came from George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. And they are very much appropriate for the day that we live in. And i got to tell you, their words were heard in heaven, and their proclamations have carried us as a nation up to this point. So come Wednesday night. Say Wednesday night. God is faithful. He's not going to fall short in any gift, and you're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and close your eyes today to be filled with the fullness of God. you got to first encounter His love. And for some of you, that will not be a happy time. But it's necessary. Set everything else aside first. And then when, the, when you turn to the Lord, the veil is removed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, if you're ready to set everything aside, if you're ready to set aside those things that you count as dear, I want you to come to the altar with your offering, with your gift, and just, just to stand here and in the presence of God, let him begin to deal in your heart. Maybe you're here this morning. You're standing in the gap for someone that has COVID or someone, someone that's sick, or maybe you are, are, are sick this morning. I've got to tell you, there's no sickness in heaven. Hallelujah. And he surrounds his thank, thankful church with healing virtue. If you need healing in your body, just come to the altar as you bring your offerings to the Lord and remain here and we're going to pray for you. Amen. I want to encourage you today. Believing in Jesus is not enough. He wants you living in an active faith every moment of every day where you're continually believing in God. And if you're not sure you're believing like that, if you're not sure this morning, just Come to the altar. Let someone agree with you in prayer. And I guarantee the veil will be removed in Jesus' mighty name. Can you play just a little quiet? So this morning, what I want you to do, I, we're going to worship the Lord a bit. We're going to worship the Lord a bit. I want you to join in with Paul and Silas when they were in jail. I want you to join in with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were in the fiery furnace. I want you to join in with Daniel when he was put into the lion's den. And I just want you to enter into a time of thanksgiving that has nothing to do with the things that are happening around you, in your family, in your culture, in your nation, or in your world. Let it be a point where you're worshiping the king face to face. Lord of Lords. Amen, amen, amen. So we're going to open the altars right now. Pastors and elders are here to pray with you as you come. We're just, I'm so glad you came today. Aren't you glad you came today? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, I thank you today that my thanksgiving releases your power, that my thanksgiving releases your favor, that my thanksgiving releases your miracles. I receive by faith your love right now in Jesus' name. Come on, let's worship together. Thank you. 
together lovely all together